Inside Racing is brought to you by Dunlop. Gerhard Mitter, gifted racing driver and skilled mechanic all in one. His typical attributes, he had an iron determination, afraid of nothing and no one. He took on every challenge. Mitter was a DKW dealer in Böblingen. His first races were in the early 50s, on two wheels, and in secret, against the will of his parents. He primarily began with motorcycle racing, with his NSU Fox, which he built from scrap parts. Then in 1953, he started to do road racing. A DKW back then could certainly be made to shift, and Mitter's situation made it very convenient for him to take part in motorsport. As a dealer, he just had to look on the shelf, and he had what he needed. Then came the move into formula racing. In 1958, the Formula Junior rule came out. In 59, he then built and prepared a car and was highly successful with it in his very first year. On an estate car chassis, Mitter mounted an out-and-out -out racing shell. Beneath it purred a modified three-cylinder two-stroke engine. And with this car, he went off racing, as here at the Solitude Race in Stuttgart in 1959. Number 15, the Mitter Drift. As the Mitter DKW started to date, he struck up a good contact in England with Lotus. The Colin Chapman Gerhard Mitter relationship goes back a long way. My father had bought two Lotus cars from him as Formula Junior vehicles, and I think they often talked about mechanical matters and discussed any problems. So there was a certain rapport there. Engineering icon Chapman even provided Mitter with a Lotus Climax 25 for the 1964 German Grand Prix. Back home, in his workshop meanwhile, he did lots of hard work on his own designs. Testing was done on an airfield near Berberlingen, and it clearly showed that a Lotus chassis and two-stroke engine went very well together. At long last, his talent caught Porsche's eye. Racing boss Huska von Hanstein had noted Mitter's name in his famous little book and finally recruited him for the works team, where to the joy of the racing baron, he proved his worth. People like Graham Hill were driving for Porsche at that time, big names like Joachim Bonnier, so he had to wait his turn. But from 65, he was the number one at Porsche, and thus his wishes too got fulfilled. Dann wurden auch seine Wünsche dann erfüllt. Mitter competed for Porsche in endurance races and drove prototypes. His technical know-how helped to fine-tune the sports cars. In 1965, he came off the track at spa francorchamps orchamps and broke his foot. For him, no reason not to carry on driving. As we've seen already, he had an iron determination. It was 66, the first race was coming up and his foot was in plaster. Huschke von Hanstein persuaded the race officials to let Mitter race, despite the handicap. Porsche converted the clutch for him, building in a rail instead of a pedal, so that he could press it. And then he raced in the Rossfield hill climb against Ludovico Scafiotti in a Ferrari. It was a real sensation. From 1966 to 68, he was hill climbing champion three times. In this Porsche 908 two-stroke, a prototype, he celebrated his last great victory in 1969 in the Targa Florio. The triumph was followed by tragedy. Two months later, he crashed during practice in a Formula 2 BMW. It was due to be his entry into the 1970 Formula 1 season. Contracts had already been signed and sealed. From the outset, there were problems with the steering. It was always very heavy. My father complained about it. It never worked properly. It was often modified, but ultimately it was never 100%. The steering was then the cause of the fatal accident. On that 1st of August, 1969, mechanical failure, of all things, 
Seal this exceptional mechanic's feet. Gerhard Mitter, a motorsports pioneer, a pedigree racing driver, and a man on first name terms with the greats of his profession and of his day. Inside Racing was brought to you by Dunlop.